Attired in terno, the Philippine national costume, Madame Marcos arrived at Tokyo International Airport on June the 13th. She was greeted at the airport by Mrs. Mutsuko Miki, wife of the Japanese Prime Minister. Wataru Hiraizumi, Vice President of the Kajima Institute of International Peace, Executive Director, Mr. A. G. Wajima. The award presentation ceremony was held three days later, in the evening of June the 16th, 1975, at the Kajima Institute of International Peace in Akasaka, Tokyo. activities in assisting your distinguished husband, President Marcos, has earned a well-known world reputation not only for your brilliant achievements in the domestic administration of your country, but also for your great contributions to the establishment of international peace by promoting friendly relations between the countries of the East and of the West.
Marcos expressing her gratitude for the award. Minasama, watakuchiwa sekai no... Madam Marcos' address in Japanese. I accept this prize on behalf of President Marcos and the people of the Philippines who are seeking for the realization of peace in the world. ceremony attend the formal reception of Philippine President Ferdinand E. Marcos and his wife. He was one of the Democrats of Asia when there were very few at that time. At the start of a 25-day diplomatic visit to Middle East nations in behalf of President Ferdinand Marcos and the Filipino people, the First Lady, Madame Imelda Romualdez Marcos, along with Philippine foreign affairs officials, set foot on Egyptian soil. At the Cairo airport, Madame Jihan Sadat, wife of Egypt's president, together with high-ranking Egyptian government officials, gave the visiting Filipinos a brief but warm welcome and collective efforts of men and women alike, which are imperative in building a world of enduring peace and happiness. To fight for status was eye-opening and instructive to many of her listeners. Little remains of the structures built in Alexandria by signing and implementing protocol of the cultural agreement concluded between Egypt and the Philippines in 1962. The agreement provides for the reciprocal exchange of scholars, scientists and artists, and technical cooperation in health, education, social welfare, agriculture, and petrochemical industries over the next two years. The Honorable Egyptian President Anwar Sadat was to meet the Philippine First Lady as he had met other contemporary world leaders before her. President Sadat had only kind words for the Philippines. Madame Marcus brought with her a personal letter from President Marcus that spelled in detail 
the Philippine position on the secessionist movement being carried out in southern Philippines by the Moro National Liberation Front, a grouping of Muslim rebels. President Sadat gave assurances that he fully supported the Philippine president's firm stand against the rebel group's demand for an autonomous state. The decision to build a dam in Aswan threatened to flood the priceless archaeological sites along the Nile. Local proportions compare even with the limitless vision of the old pharaohs. From the balconies of the tower, Madame Marcus saw at close hand one of the world's modern engineering wonders. The high dam, completed in 1970, at a cost of one billion dollars, is 364 feet high and 12,565 feet wide, forming the huge Lake Nasser that was once the Nubian Valley. Tutankhamun. His tomb was unearthed in 1922. Following morning, Mother Marcus ticked off another must on her Cairo itinerary. A visit to the Egyptian Museum, the most exhaustive repository of objects from Egypt's and perhaps the world's era of unparalleled grandeur. The outer coffin of the boy king's mother. It is a great feat of engineering that required the most precise and logical calculations. their share to the synthetical Egyptian culture. Ada Marcus signed another agreement firming up the relationship between Egypt and the Philippines, which have just become closer as a result of the visit. The Egyptian Information Minister, Kamal Abul Magid, signed for Egypt. The agreement provides for the exchange of news materials and other information between the two countries. It also facilitates travel of journalists between the Philippines and Egypt. have we been divided by selfish materialist drives pursuing advantage without regard for the legitimate rights of others brewing the storm of greed anger fear hatred and improvidence that now hangs over all of us we must often stop short and ask ourselves in wonder why do we call ourselves the United Nations? On what and for what were we united when this organization, the United Nation, was born 31 years ago? Did we unite to ensure the predominance of one race, be it black or white or yellow or brown, over all others? Has our union been dedicated to the propagation of any one
президенту и его супругатском союзе. В зрительном зале Кремлевского дворца съездов из балета «Дон Кихот». В конце октября 1917 года из бакового орудия крейсера прозвучал исторический выстрел, сигнал к штурму Зимнего дворца, где находилось Временное правительство. После революции крейсер стал учебно-боевым кораблем. Памятные сувениры будут напоминать гостям о посещении Авроры, памятника Октябрьской революции имени Ленина. Президент Маркос осмотрел цеха, производственные участки, где выпускаются газовые турбины, передвижные электростанции, металлургическое оборудование. airport by General Nasser Farage, the base commander of the Royal Kingdom's Eastern Region, and other high-ranking Saudi officials who received her with utmost respect and overwhelming hospitality. Philippine embassy officials led by Ambassador Mauyag Tamano were also at the airport in Dahran for the welcome and the reception to the First Lady. Ambassador Tamano informed us that specific instructions were given by the Royal Highness to extend the most gracious and warm welcome to Mrs. Marcos and her party. That happily exists not only at the official governmental levels between the Philippines and Saudi Arabia, but more particularly between the Saudi royal family and the first family of the Philippines. <laughs>